Today we're talking about how the INFJ doubles their insight overnight. Is it really possible that you just wake up one morning and then you have twice the insights? And even if you do, what are you going to do with them? I mean, we've talked about this, that you need both. You need the insights and then you need to take action. And hopefully, you know, my channel is one of the ways that helps you to take action on those insights. But the truth is also that the more insights you do have, the more you know what you need to take action on. Because very often, even we as INFJs with all the insights that we do have, they sort of don't seem like they're enough to actually push our life forward. Or they're going to be insights about like, you know, what another person is really thinking or some kind of conflict between two people. But what we need are insights that tell us what the next step is in our life, how we're going to get what really makes us happy, what things are not working out in our mindset. And the best way to actually get those ideas and those you know conclusions are our insights that come from our intuition so how do we get them most of the time these things come randomly so you sit on your couch you're in the shower and you know this thought comes up it happens but very often it doesn't happen often enough so today we're going to talk about how you're going to double it and this is really a proven method this is something I have used for years this isn't some esoteric thing where it's all about you know just contemplating and meditating this is actually very rational once you understand the concept behind it and it will help you to catapult your life forward because guess what yes maybe one inside or two insights a day doesn't really make a difference but you have to think of it exponentially with every day that you have more insights your life moves forward exponentially it happens faster and not in a way like you're wasting your time or you know life passes you by but you actually see your life move into the direction of your personal fulfillment you live that INFJ epic life and things are happening so rapidly that you are just happy and excited to be on that ride. You're really in the flow. Before we get started, remember to download the poster on the five pillars to an INFJ epic life so you know some of the aspects that will help you to move into that direction. And if you want to take it to the next level, then work with me one-on-one. All the information you find in the links in the description. I get straight to the point. The main difference between an INFJ who has randomly some insights and an INFJ who has insights on a daily basis consistently and there are insights that actually make a difference in your life is space. And what I mean with space is being decluttered. What I mean with space is you don't have worry thoughts. And what I mean with space is you have created this creative void that just waits for your intuition to fill itself up. I mean, you have to think of it like this. We as INFJs, we thrive in environments where there isn't much information. That's actually where all our insights come from. So that's why we very often go to this place of hollowing ourselves out, how I always call it, if we want to connect with other people. We actually do this very strategically. So we forget about our own wishes. We forget about who we really are and all of that. That doesn't mean that we lose our identity we are just way more able to, you know, put ourselves into other people's shoes, become part of that emotional atmosphere, understand how other people are thinking, how that, you know, social group is working and so on. So there's a lot of power that lays within that. The problem with this whole aspect is that if we do this, we are picking up from others. We're picking up what's going on within them. And there's a lot of information that we can get from that but it will always be at the cost of the insights that are actually in alignment with who you are and what you want and how you can fill up that void more and more with who you really are. And you will see this not just, you know, happening in your mind. If you continuously do this, you will see this manifest in your life, like really realistically, practically, you'll see the better apartment, the better friends, the more connections, the more, you know, free time, all of that. This is where your insights can really make the biggest difference. And trust me, that will not mean that you have to neglect your friends or that you don't have to care about other people. It's just a way of self-love that really makes a difference. So let's make this very practical. Let's say you have an INFJ who is constantly busy. 
they constantly overextend themselves, are constantly on overload because they do everything for the people around them. They feel like they have obligations towards their job, towards, you know, family members, towards things that they, you know, can't say no to. On top of that, worries come up. Um, you know, you might have a very cluttered home that in itself also fills up that void. Remember, we want to fill up that void. That is the way the INFJ thinks. So if you hollow yourself out and then attach yourself to other people, you are way more likely to pull all that information out of them and, you know, create insights about that. That's something we do on default. It's the things we love. It's the things we're good at. So this way of thinking, of course, includes the fact that you want to fill this space up. And you do this on a default basis. You do this without having to think about it. It happens on a subconscious level and it's what it is. So if you're constantly on the search of filling the space up and the things that are around you are worries, clutter, responsibilities, you know, expectations from others that are not leading you to anywhere, you know, some kind of connections that have no future. What happens? There is no new insight that can come out of that, which actually leads you to a better life. But if you remove these things step by step, so you start with something that is very practical and simple, like decluttering your house, removing obligations from your life, removing toxic relationships. You know, that's why the five pillars through an INFJ epic life can really, really help you because it really shows you, okay, look at those different areas. How can you make your life easier in that way? Sort of like simplify your life. The more you do that, you are actually forced to go to a different space in order to fill up that void. It's really easy to fill up that void with, oh, you know, did I say something wrong towards my friend? Are they now, you know, having judgment towards me? So and so on. The more you remove those things, and it's really a practice, you know, and as I said, you can start with the simpler things like, you know, decluttering your house, removing some kind of obligations, removing very obvious toxic relationships. So it can't be an outlet for you anymore. You know what happens? You actually create space. And then in order to fill that space up, you're not going to go to all oh, the default state of getting something within that space that is not good for you. You actually go a step higher and that is, oh, what is more in alignment with myself? What is going to bring me more fulfillment? What is going to bring me more fun, more excitement about your life? And you don't have to sit on your couch and, you know, have a pen and paper ready and say, Hmm, what is the thing going to be that's going to make my life happy? These thoughts will pop up how they already do, but maybe they happen like, let's say once a day. Why are they happening only once a day? Because throughout that other time, all your thoughts are already reserved on things that are not moving your life forward. That's why meditation is so great. What is meditation all about? It's not about those five minutes or those 10 minutes where you, you know, empty your mind out, you know, in such a way, by the way, for people who haven't started meditating yet, don't expect this to happen right away. So it's a meditation practice, meaning you start, guess what? Within 10 seconds, your thoughts are going to be, Oh, what did I have to buy? Like this afternoon, what is it that I have to do? What are people expecting of me? This is just something that you've conditioned yourself to. So what that practice helps you become is to be aware of where your thoughts are going. And if you allow yourself more and more space and you get more comfortable with it, you know, you have to confront a lot of conflicting beliefs that you have within you. You know, there's a reason why we always fill ourselves up because like it's uncomfortable to be in that space because being in that space means actually being with yourself. And so often we have such judgments about ourselves that this is uncomfortable. But if you stick it out, if you allow yourself to take it step by step, you are going to be more and more comfortable with having more space, more simplicity in your mind, decluttering your mind. And then by default, the way your mind thinks, it will come up with ideas. 
that will bring your life forward. Again, you're already experiencing it, but you can experience it hundredfold. So take those actions today and don't worry about, oh, like that little thing isn't going to make a difference. It's not about like this one thing. It's not about this one relationship. It's about you teaching yourself that you're in control of where your thoughts go. You don't even have to come up with all of those ideas. You just have to practice removing yourself from those thoughts that are not helping you move forward. And there are thoughts of, you know, self-judgment. There are thoughts about worry. There are thoughts about other people, obligations towards them, like all of those things. And the more you do this, the more those insights will arise. And then it's all about taking actions on those insights. And I always say, you know, keep those things separate. Those are two different ways of thinking. The one is the NI mind, where your ideas pop up. That's why I always keep like the notes app open on my phone. When I have an idea about a video or, you know, about something I wanna do or something about my life, I write it down. This is one way of thinking. Again, we're tapping into our NI. We're allowing it to happen, so to say. Taking action requires something completely different. That's the moment when you actually fill up your mind consciously with, okay, I need to take step one. I need to then take step two and then make it happen. So if you have this idea of, let's say, getting a license on nutrition because you want to start helping people getting their nutrition right. And this idea came up while you were just, you know, in the shower or allowing yourself to have space, you write it down. And then come Monday, you actually start taking action. You check out the five classes that are most interesting to you. You sign up, you pay the fee and you take action. This is where you tap into your SE. And it's a completely different way of thinking than this allowing. I know both functions are perceiving functions, but in this case, I mean, take action, do it in one separate way. And the other one is make enough space from things that are definitely not moving your life forward. So you have enough positive void to fill it up with insights that make you happy, that make you fulfilled, that help you tap into your INFJ epic life. And just start simple. Like sometimes people think they have to do like these big gestures, like something so extreme, they have to cut off all of their friends. And you know, people who they're actually connected with, like let's be honest, just because somebody's toxic in your life, that doesn't mean that you can just let go of them just like that. If you've conditioned yourself to be connected to that person, this isn't going to happen overnight, but there are certain aspects that are way easier. So start with them. What is something that you know for sure you can do now? I always like to say, go outside of your comfort zone, but don't overwhelm yourself. It's not about willpower. It's about creating a new normal and it's about becoming somebody and not so much about achieving a certain things. Once you become the person who can take control of their life, the external things are happening, you know, not by themselves, but you are going to take action towards them as a byproduct, not the other way around. And this is going to make the biggest difference. You can double, quadruple, you know, hundredfold all your insights and then take action on them. Remember, if you want some more ideas on how to do this structurally, get the poster on the five pillars to an INFJ epic life. And if you're really serious about this and you say, okay, I know this is the right path for me. I'm going to invest in myself and into my future, then work with me one-on-one. All the information you find in the links in the description. And if you wanna watch another video now that is in alignment with today's topic, then watch the video, why the INFJ is slower than average. That's actually a good thing. You'll be surprised the connection you'll find there. See you next time.